For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Embrace the love the cross requires. Cling to the one whose heart. Amen. Open your Bible with me today to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians and chapter 12 will be today, and we'll be looking at spiritual gifts. What the Bible has to say about spiritual gifts. Look with me now in verse number one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Paul, the Apostle Paul, who's writing to the church of Corinth, and to me and to you to this day, to the New Testament church, he's wanting you to know he does not want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. Why? Because they are vitally important to God's church. And God's work. God can work through a person through the spiritual gift that he has given them to do the work of the Lord. He can empower you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul wants you to know concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, he doesn't want you to be ignorant. He wants you to understand it. He wants you to know how to use it. He wants you to know what your spiritual gift is and how you can apply it in your life and in your church. And also, Paul might have had a thought in the back of his mind about the the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, but also evil spirits, because there are evil spirits in this world. The Bible says the real battle is not with another person. It's not with flesh and blood. The Bible says the real battle is the spiritual battle. We do battle evil spirits and evil forces. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians. And so that's where the real battle is at. And Paul wants you to know, he does not want you to be ignorant about the spiritual gifts that God has given to his people, to the church, to accomplish the work of the Lord. Amen. Look at verse number two, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number two. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You see, before conversion, those Corinthians, they had been idolaters. They were, they were enslaved by evil spirits, if you will, as many are today. They are worshiping and chasing everything but God. You see, the Corinthians, and they, they lived in fear. They were led by those evil spirits. And you say, well, I was never in fear. Oh, yes, the Bible says everyone fears death. Death stalks everyone. Death stalks everyone. And I'm here to tell you, just like God can call a man and give him power to do his work, the devil, the devil has power. You listen to me, the devil will call people to do his evil bidding. Those evil spirits will enslave uh, those people. Remember what Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I believe there's many evil spirits pushing people to do things that then people don't even understand, but that evil spirit understands, that demonic force understands. Remember what the Bible says? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against evil forces. That's what the Bible says. And so Paul wants you to know what those spiritual gifts are so that you can edify the church, but also you can battle those evil spirits. Don't you like what Paul says? 
He just puts it in plain English, doesn't he? You're carried away to those dumb idols. How many of us have dumb idols in our life? We chase dollar bills, a paper with a number on it. Or we chase popularity, or position, or power, or a home, or a car, or a certain number in the bank account, or a certain address. We chase all these dumb idols that mean absolutely nothing when we should be chasing after God and be close to Him. God said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Look with me now, verse number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Believers must know how to judge all spirits. You might, there are evil spirits out there. And I don't mean they're going to come to you and speak to you audibly. But I do in a way that we don't even, can't even comprehend and understand. There's some evil forces that can persuade you to go the wrong way. And it is so important to know how to discern the voice of an evil spirit or the authentic voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Always remember that the Holy Spirit is not the loudest thing that you hear. The Holy Spirit is that still, small voice that is inside of you. Most of the time, that loud thing that we hear in our mind is ourself. Or it's an, it's an evil force pushing ourself. Because listen to me, the devil's... For most people, people are not going to say, I worship the devil. No, but the devil wants you to do what you want to do. The devil wants you to follow your will instead of God's will. See, it'll be all about you. That's what the devil wants to do. He, he'll use you against your own self. It's all about you. But God said it's not. It's all about him. And notice what that verse says, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. Hey, listen to me. If a person says Jesus is accursed, in other words, Jesus is not God, or, or Jesus is this, Jesus is that, I'm sure that that's a demon-inspired statement. I'm positive of that because evil spirits love and will blaspheme and curse the name of Jesus. You listen to me because there is power in the name of Jesus. It's amazing how you can get up and pray and you can talk about God and God this and God that. And they're not, people aren't offended. But as soon as you put out the name of Jesus, it really bothers people. You know why? Because there is power. In the name of Jesus. He is the Son of God. Amen. The name of Jesus has power. And the demonic forces do not like it. Amen. And so walk around your house talking about Jesus. Tell them to leave your home in the name of Jesus. Get away from my family in the name of Jesus. And you can say it out loud. People think you're crazy. That's all right. I'm going crazy for the Lord. Amen. And so listen, the Spirit of God will, will never lead you, never lead anyone to speak against the Savior. If a person is truly saved, the Holy Spirit dwells within you and gives you power to say Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you down the wrong road to say something wrong about Jesus. The Holy Spirit will always exalt the Lord Jesus. Amen. He leads people to say that Jesus is Lord, but not just with their lips, but with their life and with the confessions of their heart and the things that they say and the way that they live and the things they do. So yes, they do say it, but it's also much more powerful than that. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to live it out within your life, within your family, within your church, within your community, within your job. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do that. Look at me now in verse number four. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Listen, there, there are many different gifts, in other words. But they all come from the same Spirit. They all come from the Holy Spirit. And I'm just here to tell you, many, many people profess to have gifts or, or work miracles or, or etc., but they really don't come from God. They come from somewhere else. They're exalting their own self. You see, when a person truly has a gift from God, that gift will exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. It will lift up the name 
of Jesus. It won't just create some excitement or some sation or some great emotions. No, it will lift up the name of Jesus. And that's what those spiritual gifts are for. They are for the work of the Lord and they are for the edifying of the body of Christ. They are not for that person to look special. They are not to make that person important. That person didn't do anything. God gave them that gift. And when you will think about it that way, it will humble you in your own mind. Even if you're the greatest preacher that there is today, listen, you didn't get that on your own. The only reason you got it is because God gave it to you and it's not for you. It's for the edifying of the church. It's to further the name of Jesus. It's to lift up the name of Jesus. So there's many different gifts, like that verse says. There's diversity of gifts, but they all came from the same Spirit. And we can all be unified knowing that they are from the Holy Spirit. You see, because unity is not found in the possession of just one common gift. Oh, we can all do this so we all know we're right. No, they all the gifts come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of those gifts. And verse number five continues and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. We don't all have the same work. We don't all do the same thing. God may have empowered you to preach. God may have empowered you to, give, to teach a Sunday school. God may have empowered you to have the strength to vacuum the church on Saturday so that people can sit in a clean church on Sunday. Amen. That, I do believe, is God has given you the gift of, of, of work. And, and we can't put one gift above another because they are all important. Listen, they all come from the Lord. And it's very interesting to me that if, if you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, there are nine spiritual gifts, as we'll see here in just a minute. There are nine spiritual gifts, and there's also nine fruits of the Spirit. And that's not by coincidence. There's nine spiritual gifts and there's nine fruits of the Spirit. Remember, God is a God of order. Amen. And so that is a very interesting fact to me. And so verse 5 says, and there's a difference of administration, but the same Lord. So we don't all have the same work, but we have in common. But what we have is common is what to be done for the Lord and serving others, not ourselves, in serving others. Verse number six, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. Do you see a pattern here? You see, there are different diversities, but the same spirit. There are different administrations, but the same Lord. There are different operations, but the same God. It's all coming from the same place, but there are just different facets of the spiritual gifts. And can I just say there are many just who just kind of ignore some of the spiritual gifts, like as if they're not there because some people have abused them or, or, or made that, um, you know, took it out of context. But listen, the spiritual gifts are real and they're really from God. And God really wants you to use them in your life. And Paul is telling you here concerning spiritual gifts, he doesn't want you to be ignorant. He wants you to know that they are there, that there is power available to you to use for the work of God. And Paul does not want you to be ignorant of that fact. Amen. So verse number six, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. There are diversities of activities as far as the spiritual gifts are concerned, but hey, it comes from the same God who empowers each of us to do those spiritual gifts, to have those spiritual gifts. So if one gift seems more successful or more spectacular or more powerful than another, it's not because of the superiority of that person. It's not because that person is more special. Oh no, oh no. That is so that God can be it exalted because listen to me, it is God who supplies the power for that gift. It is God who gives the gift. Amen. And it's the Holy Spirit that empowers the person to use that gift in their life when they are fully submitted to God's will because it's not for them. 
And I do believe that if that person gets lifted up in pride, God will do something. God will give them a thorn in the flesh so they do not get full of pride. The Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, so he was not exalted above measure. He prayed three times that God would remove that, and God did not. And he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Otherwise, Paul would have been exalted above measure. It would have been about Paul instead of about God. And so the Bible says, to much, who, who much is given, much is required. If God has given you a great gift, then there is going to be much required of you. Amen. Look at verse number seven, verse number seven. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What'd that verse just say? The manifestation of the spirit is it's to profit everybody, the whole church, other Christians. It's for other people. It's to profit with all. And so the spirit manifests himself in the life of each believer by imparting some gift. And listen to me. There's no believer who doesn't have a function to perform. Every one of us, if you're saved, if you're born again, you are a part of the body of Christ and you have a function to do. And every one of them is important. Do you know that if it wasn't for your big toe, you wouldn't be stable? You would just fall over? It'd be hard. It would be very hard for you to grip the ground and walk and balance, and especially to walk across uneven ground. But because you have that big toe down there, that big toe clamps on the ground and it keeps you stable, and you can level yourself, and you're able to walk across uneven ground, maybe even walk across a log going across a riverbank, or, or hop, skip, and jump. Because of that big toe, you can be stable and walk stable. If it wasn't for that big toe, boy, you would have a hard time. You'd be very clumsy and very likely to fall on your face. Now, when you look down, you say, there's nothing glamorous about that big toe. Matter of fact, it might even be kind of ugly like mine. But listen, it is vitally important to the rest of the body. So whatever function you have, you listen to me, it is vitally, vitally important. Why? Because it makes the body of Christ powerful to the world and to each other to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And it is all for him. It's all about him. It's not about us. And so those gifts are given to profit the entire body. They're not for self-display or lift, be lifted up in pride or some kind of self-gratification, but it's in order that we might help others and lift up Christ, amen, that we should love one another. Verse number eight, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So we're getting into now the spiritual gifts, the exact ones. He says, given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom is a gift. Another is the word of knowledge. And we often don't think about that as a spiritual gift, but the Bible says it is. By the Spirit, the word of wisdom. And then another one is the word of knowledge. Two different gifts. And so the word of wisdom is, is a supernatural power to speak like with divine insight. To, to be able to maybe to write discern scripture like you should, or look into a situation, be able to speak something powerfully and biblically into somebody's life to resolve difficult problems, to defend the faith. Amen. Stephen so demonstrated the word of wisdom with those adversaries. They weren't able to resist the Holy Spirit in their heart. Acts 6.10, and they were not able to desist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. That's what Acts says in 6.10 about Stephen. They, they weren't able to stop the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge, and that's, that's the power to communicate information that's been divinely revealed. If, if you're able to read a passage of Scripture and God gives you the knowledge to 
to consume that scripture, to digest that scripture, and to be able to give it back out to people in a way that they can understand and apply it to their life. The word of knowledge. Psalms 25, 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The sharing of that knowledge with others is the word of knowledge, is what Psalms 25, 14 says. So the word of knowledge is a spiritual gift. The word of wisdom is a spiritual gift. Verse number 9 says, To another faith by the same spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. There's two more gifts, faith, and we often don't think of that as a spiritual gift, but the Bible says it is, and to another, the gift of healing. The gift of faith, the gift of faith. Maybe you have the gift of faith that you know you can move a mountain when you're pursuing God's will. There's nothing that can stand in your way because God Almighty, you have faith in Him and that He's going to get His work done and that you are just a servant obeying him. If you think of uh, George Mueller, he's a great example of that. He didn't make his needs known to anyone, but he cared for like 10,000 orphans over 60 years. He didn't tell anybody about the needs that he had except for God, and he prayed for him, and God faithfully provided. Amen. And I love that, man. When you pray to God and you don't tell a soul, and then that need gets met, you know that came from God Almighty. Praise God for that. And that is powerful. Amen. And so faith, faith, and I do believe some people have more faith than others. And But also, faith is like a muscle. The more that you use it, the bigger it'll get. But if you stop using it, it'll shrivel up. Make sure that you're stepping out on faith. And the next gift there is the gift of healing. The gift of healing by the same Spirit. I do believe there are people that can pray and get a hold of God and have the gift of healing. Not that they themselves have this new supernatural power. They can reach out and touch you and knock you on the ground. No, that's a bunch of junk. You listen to me. The Bible says that if you're sick, go to the elders of your local church and ask them to pray for you. But I do believe, because of what the Bible says, there are some people that can get a hold of God and pray and ask God to divinely and miraculously heal a person according to what the Bible says. God answers prayers. Verse number 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. You know what a common day miracle today would be, I do believe, is casting out a demon. Man, that's a miracle because many people in the Bible were possessed and they were known by two things. A lot of times they were cutting themselves and they were naked. And many times a day, I believe that happens. You ever see it on the news? Somebody gets on drugs and they get naked and they run down the road acting crazy. I believe that they are possessed or they're cutting themselves. I believe that they are possessed. And so casting out a demon, I believe, is a a miracle. And it's the name of Jesus that has power. And the Bible says discerning of spirits. I believe God gives some people certain insight into situations and they can discern what is wrong and what is right with that situation? It makes me think of a documentary. They sold their soul for rock and roll. If you've watched that, it's a man that got saved. And God has given him divine insight on certain matters of these things. And it is mind-blowing when you truly see how devious the devil is and the things that he can slide under the door, sugar-coated where you don't even hardly notice them, but yet it's like an infection that you can't see. It'll tear you up and eat you alive. And I do believe God has given people certain divine insight to be able to see those things. And remember, it's for the body of Christ, right? Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you're not saved, make sure that you've repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to 
crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.